Okay, I will speak about microphone later. First, we can remove the focus. Um, so I mentioned about uh, mixing and editing because uh, they are the basis of my practice in sound. And when I started, uh, it was not on the computer. So I'm very old compared to this very young audience. And at first, when I uh, started studying uh, sound and making my experiments, uh, it was on this kind of machine, but uh, much less um, um, compact, it was bigger, and I had a pair of uh, scissors. Um, so, um, editing uh, is just taking a sound from uh, another machine, such as this one, or from a microphone, such as this one, connecting it to a tape recorder, and when you press the rec button, there is some tape that gives you an indication of the duration. You don't have a timer who says, oh, you recorded 1 minute 35 seconds, you just have some material that you can touch, that you can destroy, that you can cut in splice. So when you had one meter of tape, you know that you have 38 seconds of sound. So if you want to edit a sentence, someone is speaking, you want to cut different words, you don't know where it is because it's just like tape. So you need to listen maybe one time, two times, four times, six times before you exactly know where to cut. And then you cut. And once you cut, you cannot undo. You can put some rubber tape on it. And but you cannot do it several times because the, then the tape will be broken very easily. And, and then when you want to make a loop with some sounds, you don't press a button on the computer, you, you really make a real loop that can turn for some while. So this experience, uh, I think I was very lucky because I was one of the last students, uh, last, one of the last people to discover it uh, as a technology, as a young uh, sound artist because I was in a school where uh, we were taught some experimental music techniques and in the studio we, there was some computers, some very cool stuff but for the first year, the, the student of the first year, like the, the, the youngest student they gave us the worst of equipment, the most old equipment and by chance it was all analog equipment which means the learning of sound that I've done is not by watching a screen it's not like sitting with a laptop on a desk it's standing with huge machine that you need to you need to put the tape on it remove it, connect it on shelves and then it's a mess, it falls down and it's all dusty and you need to clip the tape and then you cut and there are many many small pieces of tape that fall everywhere so all of that is very very uh, non-visual you don't use your eyes in, a, in this kind of studio you use your hands and you touch things and you listen and you listen many many times the same thing so working now with computers for me is amazingly convenient but at the same time I miss a lot that time when I was not looking at things I was just listening so, I mentioned about um, editing techniques, mixing techniques, analog equipment, switching to digital equipment, but I still didn't say the most important is uh, when I started doing sound, I was uh, working in studio uh, for learning different things, and the only uh, desire I had was to go out of the studio and play outside especially in the, in, the, in the nature. So at first, uh, it seemed that I was not in the good school for that because all the experimental music I was uh, listening and uh, learning was made inside the studio, inside buildings, with instruments, with equipment and it was made for being played on loudspeakers. So that's one big part of the 
other stories of uh, experimental music. But my uh, intention was to go out, to bring some part of the, of the equipment and, and to play in the mountains, basically. Uh, so I come from southeast of France, in a place where uh, the mountains are very close, a bit like in Taiwan, you can just drive one hour and there is no one, and you are at the top of the mountains. And in these mountains, there were so many interesting things for my ears, such as dried leaves, uh, stones that fall down, of course, in animals, but also in winter time, like uh, wind blowing in, in, in dry leaves, these kind of things. So I wanted to record those sounds because I think they were very interesting, and as interesting as the sound that I could produce inside the studio. So progressively, I started to uh, learn by myself the techniques for recording sound outdoor. So um, this is what we call field recording. And there is something very important when you are doing field recordings compared to studio recording. Is inside a studio, you can decide almost everything. You can decide, oh, I want to compose a piece based on electronic sound, and I will try to experiment. Then you find something interesting by playing or by improvising, or you can design some software on Max MSP or other softwares and build an interface that you will play with and you have time for experimentation and once you're kind of satisfied with the result you just record, keep it for later and once you have a lot of material maybe you can compose them together or design an exhibition, whatever what I appreciate when I'm going to do field recordings is I have no way to predict anything I can just prepare my basic equipment, which is just uh, inside a big backpack, like a sound recorder, micro different kinds of microphones, and the most important is a headphone, and then I don't know what will happen. And this is completely uncertain, and this is something that almost never happened in, inside the studio. In, inside the studio you need to build some strategies and process of work. But when you are outside, maybe suddenly it will be a huge rain and the only sound you will listen is a different kind of sound of rain. And if you don't want to waste your time, you need to adapt to this situation. Oh, what can I do with the sound of rain? How do I record it? If I have some technical problem, how can I solve it? And if I can record the sound of rain during maybe one day or two days or one week if it's raining every, every day, how can I find, find different ways of recording which are still interesting? So, all these questions about uncertainty of course remind some musicians, such as John Cage or different musicians that introduce the random inside their music. And with the recording, it's not only a randomness that is decided by the fact going outside, but it's also a direct consequence of the physical environment. So, as a kind of example, I would like to play, to play a small extract of something that I didn't do inside the nature, something that I've done in a place that I really don't like, which is Taipei, <laughs> the city of Taipei, because usually I really don't like working in cities. I like going in remote place where there is nobody. But I live in Taiwan since 2005. First time I visited Taiwan in... No, I live in Taiwan since 2007. First time I visited Taiwan in 2004. And basically I live in the suburb of Taipei. And I, I always was considering if I'm annoyed by the noise, how can I handle them? How can I just live with all this noise? Because if I go to Kongkwa, Shima, my ears are bleeding. <laughs> so noisy. So the only way for me to adapt to this environment is to make art of this environment, to make some sound pieces with it. It means recording the sound and trying to find some way to appreciate them, not to hate them immediately. <laughs> so uh, I will play an extract of a piece called Kwebe. Well, 
看这样子还 OK 吗？我我我还是简单讲一下，就是刚才从呃 mix 的概念到 editing 到它不同的概念有稍微介绍一下。那就是为什么刚才提到用 tap 呢？因为前面这一台大家等下后面来看，再来就是真的类比的盘带机。那像以前早期一样，你们在学习的时候，它其实用的器材就是完全类比，它需要你录音就是真的录在 tap 上，然后你的剪辑啊、你的录合都是真的去剪那个 tap。那他大概有讲一下这样的这样的工作的方式对他学习的影响。那对，我简单讲好
Okay. Um, so this uh, piece uh, and one of uh, the series of work related to the city of Taipei. And actually it was not my uh, first intention to create something related to Taipei, but I've been invited by different uh, organizations in Europe and each time uh, they knew that uh, I was a sound artist uh, based in Taipei and for most of people in Europe, um, Taipei, they are not very clear where is Taipei, maybe they think it's in Thailand or something like this. <laughs> and each time they, they, they were asking me why you should do something related to the place where you are living in. So the first time was in 2008 for a web radio uh, called Silence Radio that you can find online uh, very easily. And the, they were just opening a kind of series of broadcasts related to soundscape. Uh, maybe I will talk later about soundscape, this kind of strange word. Um, but uh, at that time I was just uh, starting to live here and, and getting familiar, familiar with this city and it was summertime and I knew that summertime is a very very special moment for sound in, in the city because of of course uh, it's Kuei so you hear a lot of Miao uh, uh, in, in, in different streets of Taipei plus uh, there was something in, very uh, fascinating for me is uh, the presence of animals in, in this city and especially during the summertime is uh, Chan uh, that are almost in every garden and I think I thought that there was something very interesting by, uh, by these two phenomena in summertime because in the summertime the doors of hell open all the ghosts are coming back and the people, the living people are giving food to them and until they just go back and the cicadas spend all their life in the earth, under the, the floor uh, in the soil and then in summertime they just go out and just for a, a very short moment in their life they just sing, copulate and die very quickly and there is this two cycle of life and death that I find very interesting to cohabitate in a sound piece of course uh, the reaction of audience in Europe and in Taipei is extremely, extremely different. The effect is very different. Uh, so I compose it from my point of view, being not so familiar, but starting to live there and starting to uh, get familiar with a different kind of sound. So um, this kind of work, of course, uh, there is a huge question that is uh, always asked to me is, is it music? Is it documentary? Because on one hand, the way I organize the sound is really in a musical way. I don't... Uh, the, the most important when I'm doing the mixing or the editing is how the sound uh, switch to one to each other. And more important is how the listening, my listening and the listening of the audience can follow different lines in this composition. One, uh, like at the very beginning, there is a kind of metal percussion, and suddenly there is sound of a road or distant cars, followed by the voice of someone, and and that's really like a different instrument just uh, playing together or something like this. Um, so on one hand, it's really uh, the way I compose these pieces, I edit and mix them, is really musical. But of course, uh, almost every sound I use um, has a strong visual reference. Of course, I will not bring the image uh, by showing some visual videos. It's really not what, what I'm looking for. And I don't have a specific aim of making you think about something special. But I know that those sounds bring a lot of uh, personal uh, memories and for the people who are not living in Taipei something is very interesting is most of the people find it very exotic compared to the sound that they have uh, in their own cities um, but many people are able to guess incredible things so for example there is um, 
there was a critique of this CD by a journalist, and the journalist could really get some details, really amazing, from the piece. Uh, for example, I recorded, not in this extract a bit later, in uh, Longchance, uh, when there is uh, the big uh, event for Cueve, there is uh, too many people, so they cannot do Cueve, because there is not enough uh, piece of wood, so they use two coins. And just like and I recorded this sound, which is very a small sound compared to the firecrackers, the road, everything. But this moment is, of course, for us very quite clear uh, when we listen. And okay, I would say that when I'm doing the listening session, half of the people can recognize or not. But some people in Europe just listen very carefully and can get this detail and think that's very strange. What could it be? So they listen again and again and say, hmm, it sounds really like small pieces of metal that are through on the floor. And they say, yeah, but it's not through like a, a bunch of pieces of metal, a lot of them. Just one or two, one or two, one or two. And behind we can share some music and environment of prayers or whatever. So they start to imagine what kind of ritual could be made by throwing some coins on the floor. And that's very interesting for me because those sounds are really, uh, really, they are realistic. I mean, I didn't transform them into something that you cannot recognize. Something just uh, recorded and selected, edited and mixed with some others. It's, I didn't add some instrument or something. So it's something that I consider like on a uh, documentary aspect, but some people can just put the image they want on it. So this kind of work is ambiguous. At the same time, it has its own musicality, at the same time it's really like a uh, narration of a story by using sound. Do you have some question? <laughs> can we exchange a bit more? <laughs> what do you think? I want to know your reaction to this extract. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious when um, when you compose the music like a track. Usually, I mean, if we play jazz or pop music, we have uh, intro, and melody, and then maybe improvisation, and then back to melody. So there's a very clear structure and chords and how you. Uh, so I was listening to that, and of course, there are, I see transitions, especially when cicada. Uh, was coming up, then you see, you feel sort of emotion rise, emotion rise. So I, I, I like that. Uh, apart from that, how do you? Is is there a rule when you compose? I mean, um, we are talking about techniques now. You know, how you put blocks of music together? Is there any rules? Uh, okay, I, I think it's a very important question because um, I don't have a very strong musical background. And the only music I really learned how to play is North classical, North classical Indian music, which has another set of rules, like in Western or even jazz, of course. Um, but something that attracts me in experimental music is the rules exist only if you create them. Which means each time I, I start to do some recordings, when I am in the situation, I am really deeply influenced by the way sound organized by itself. So, of course, here there is a lot of editing, but some other pieces, uh, and maybe at the end, if I do a small improvisation with my friend Frank, uh, maybe I will not even edit it, simply let it go. Because it adds its own rules and structure. So I just follow those rules that are made by the reality or something like this. But actually, any kind of project, I have to decide how much I want to create the rules, how much I want to let the sound by itself create the rule. And the rules I create are completely related to the material I gathered. So in a city like Taipei, uh, which is quite active from the point of view of listening, uh, I am very really influenced by it, by layers of thick sounds. How does it shift one to another? Because even if it's a kind of noisy city, it has very, very quiet places. 
and the transition from a very noisy place to a quiet place is extremely, extremely quick. So that affects me a lot when I'm doing the sound recording and when I'm getting in the studio and then listening back to all this material and when I start to edit because I will have all these uh, dynamics and energies. Uh, another example is uh, I, I recently have done a project with Sounds of Frogs and Electronic Sounds and uh, it's the first time I only focus on one kind of animal sound for composing and it's the most quick and active music I've ever composed in my life because it's so full of energy that I was completely under the influence of those songs. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes uh, you say the material in Taiwan for other countries is the exotic, right? But for Taiwanese people, uh, it's a little country. So we will find more uh, subsidy. Oh. We, we can connect it to the more uh, specific uh, activity of a festival or something like that. So how do you uh, prevent or utilize, use this advantage and uh, disadvantage for Taiwanese research? Okay. Um, I would say that there are different layers according to different projects. For example, in, the, in this piece, I didn't aim specifically, oh, this is for the Western audience or Taiwanese audience. I, I just take my position as someone who would just move in and start to get familiar. So I am the, I am the audience I was targeting <laughs> at first. But uh, for sure, um, this kind of work, it's a bit a process for me also to engage a relationship with the listeners because mostly I will, I will have organized some listening session and get some response for it. It's also one of the aim of this kind of work is a relationship with the people who live inside. Even if my musical ears uh, try to make a, a revolution and say, no, 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 listen, it's just music. So maybe after I can play a completely opposite example of a work I've done in a community. Was there a question? Recognize the sound. Where? Yes. Which one? <laughs> Where? Where? Where did you listen to this bird? When? Have you heard it before? Sounds three kinds of bird. Three kinds of bird. Three times. Okay. No. <laughs> oh. 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 Yeah. It is. Yes. Okay. 
there is two kinds of hole. One in this one, and the other one is you know, much more distant. Softer. And then behind there is this is not birds, this is frog. Okay, um, the most obvious one is uh, oh, it's uh, Huang Huang Zui Jiao Xiao. It's one kind of owl in Taiwan. It's very, very common if you go in the nature, even in the surrounding of Taipei uh, by night. It's singing all the year. The first time I came in Taiwan in 2004, and just before leaving, I went by night in one small forest, and I could record something like this, but not so good quality, just a bad recording of that sound. But that sound is, is so usual when you are in the nature by night in Taiwan that when I came back to France, because I just came for one month, I, I kept in my ears the sound of Taiwan was just like this. Because this was the best moment for me, being alone in the darkness, in the nature of Taiwan, but really, wow, I'm strong. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this sound was just giving, giving me back this uh, feeling of moisture, heat, many, many, many frogs around me, maybe snakes, or of course some stress, and that was something quite fun, quite a strong uh, experience for the first time. Then I came back in 2005, and I could listen again. I've done some other recording, not good recording. Then in 2006, I came two times, spring and summer, it was the same birds, bad recordings. But it became to be something very familiar for me because each time I was listening to ah, I'm back in Taiwan, in the forest that I prefer in Taiwan. I recorded that sound last week. It's the first time I could record a good sound of this bird. <laughs> because usually I go for recording frogs and I don't spend so much time with birds. And also, there is always some planes or road or electric lines or maybe the, the bird is far away so if I go to find him, he's just behind the forest. But this time was in Ilan and I was just below the tree and he was just above me. That sound I'm very familiar to. For me it's becoming completely part of my memory of Taiwan. If one day I leave Taiwan, remind Taiwan, a few sounds will come to my ears. And this one is among them. So, uh, there is something I mentioned about the sound of nature is the reason why I do some fear recordings in the nature is mostly because I think it's super great music. Usually when I when you go especially in a place like Taiwan by night or even in the early morning, you can hear so many crazy interesting things that reminds me of the best experimental music you can find, electronic music or whatever, improvisation. So my first interest for uh, sound of nature was simply to get some cool sound, some fascinating sound, mater sound material. But when I moved in Taiwan, I was, of course, I, I had some interest into ecology, but when I moved in Taiwan, I said, wow, this place has so many frogs, it's amazing. Just on one small island, there is 32 species, and if you go in one garden in Taipei, maybe you can hear four, four five, six species at the same time which is unbelievable for someone who comes from southern France where there is one species <laughs> always the same, only, only in summertime but in Taipei, all the year you can hear some so I started doing some recordings and of course at the end I was becoming more and more interested by the knowledge of the animals which is something quite interesting and maybe also reply to your question about uh, the cultural background of sound is for me, it's not only uh, a background. When I mention about sounds and their background, it's not, not only from people's per perspective. It's also from animal perspective. Because by listening to an animal, you can guess, of course, if it's a male or a female. You can guess which species. If it's a species that you can find only in Taiwan or in Asia or in the whole world. I've recorded some, some sounds of birds in Taiwan and there is the same birds in France but most of the frogs that are recorded in Taiwan they are endemic so only living on this island I even recorded one frog 
which exist only in one very small, small, small region of, ta of uh, Taiwan, in Zhonghua. So, this kind of relationship between the sound and the place is becoming more and more important to me. Not only, okay, from the point of view of the culture of the people living there, but also what does it mean in this landscape, in this geography? How does it change? Because if the environment changes, the whole sound will change. Some sound will completely disappear. Some, uh, at the opposite, will be more and more heard when the species move, for example, for example amongst animals. And something also that interests me, which is very different from my original background in experimental music, is now when I go in the nature, all the sound I hear, they are not a musical composition like before. They will also have some small labels on it. It's a bit like, oh, when I hear this sound, there is a label appearing like with a Chinese name, but some other, I have also the Latin name, usually not the English name, but yeah, Latin name and, and Chinese name. And behind those names, it can be a bit stupid just to have names of different sounds, but it's not only a name, it's a whole process of life and cycle according to the year, to the place. It's a relationship to different kind of plants, different kind of different level of temperature, humidity, these kind of things. I think, yeah, very interesting. To reply to your second question uh, about the experience of recording in Taiwan and interact with local people, I would say there is uh, different extremes. If I'm in the nature and I, I see someone, I just move away. <laughs> uh, I'm not in the nature for discussing with people. Uh, at the contrary, um, when I'm recording in the city or in a in place where people live, I would say first, even if I speak a perfect Chinese, Taiwanese, Kutia and any kind of language, I will always have the same appearance. So I'm always a weird uh, atoa. So people <laughs> just look at me like, what is this guy doing with such a big microphone and headphones in the middle of the street? So, of course, most of the time, some people will come and say in my microphone, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it can be disturbing, but most of the time, it's a very good opportunity to record some cool interview, <laughs> actually. Uh, but it, just, it is the case in Taiwan, but actually, it was already the same for me in France. Uh, for example, I wanted to record some interviews in the countryside, in a very small village. Uh, and in this village, I was in artist residency, there was a, a fountain, uh, some, some water in the center of the village. And every day, I noticed that there was a group of old ladies, very old ladies. And I wanted to record stories about this village. But in Taiwan, it's very obvious that I'm not from Taiwan. But in the central, uh, central France, in those villages, it's very obvious that I'm not from this place, but I'm from cities. So the cultural difference is the same. So those ladies don't want to talk to me. They don't want to be recorded. So the only strategy for going and record those stories is to pretend not to record them. So I was going just in front of them, very obvious, wearing my very professional equipment, taking some strange attitude just to record the fountain, and just the sound of water. Of course, I could hear that voice like, look, what is he doing? He's recording the sound of the water, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, look, what, he's, he looks strange, blah, 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 blah. I just continue. And then after I just make a pause, and then I said, I want to record the sound of the water. Is there any other place with the water? No. So, what other sound can I record in this village? And then they start to think, because they know, oh, I'm working, so maybe I need some, a bit of help. And they say, yeah, the bells. Oh, the bells. Oh, that's interesting. So then I start to, to say, oh, I'm collecting the sound of the village. And then they say, but the bells, before, we could hear differently, because it was not mechanic, it was by hand. The church, it was like big ropes, and someone was dragging it, and now it's like, uh, a digital device that just 
hammer the bell. So we started to, to discuss, and of course, I was recording the voices, and I recorded super interesting um, stories about it. It would it wouldn't have happened if I was just going and introducing myself very politely and can I ask you some questions? We just uh, go away. Don't care about it. So yeah, that's one part of the of the interaction with local people. And another uh, aspect of the interaction with people. Uh, then I can I can play some extract first. I play some sound first.
Okay. Um, so, this is an extract of a CD uh, called Dingtian Taoshan. Taoshan is the name of a village in Wufong uh, Xiang, in Xinzhu uh, So, it's an uh, Atayal people in a village. And, okay, this is uh, Taoshan Guo Xiao, uh, this place. And this CD is an extremely different work from my other sound works. Uh, because it's a collaboration with, uh, with this school and the people of this village and it's a kind of, um, I could not say it's a documentary it's more an exploration of this uh, area and we were trying to um, make some sounds available for other people inside the village and outside of the village so it's a bit difficult for me to explain this project because it's quite complicated. Um, let me think. Okay, uh, we were invited uh, with another artist uh, called Kuai Chuan Tsai, uh, who was a visual artist, to make a community-based project in Xinzhu. So it's a government-founded project, which is quite different from my other personal work. And uh, it's coming from the community center of uh, and in this village uh, the school has a kind of uh, reputation uh, for the, the choir uh, uh, kids are singing in a western style sometimes some songs uh, which are a bit uh, influenced by traditional Adair music and reinterpret into a western style they sing in Adair language sometimes in Mandarin but mostly in Adair language but really in a, in a western style and they have re produced a CD like uh, maybe five years or six years ago in a collaboration with a cello player and uh, it's, a, it's more a CD for their, uh, their choir in a, in a classical western way but this time they wanted to make something with us which is kind of com complementary to this city and that shows more the tra traditional aspect uh, of this village especially focusing on language because in the school they are teaching at a language and uh, traditional music so the whole city it's a kind of uh, pretext for one year of different activities with the children. So in that track, what you hear at the beginning is an old guy uh, telling a story. And we choose, we have recorded many stories, but we choose this one because it, it's a bit like uh, Alice in Wonderland. Uh, it's someone who is taken into another world which is very strange where the enemies, there are strawberries, blah 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 and uh, this story uh, in the Atayal culture it's, it, it hasn't been reinterpreted into the Christian way or it hasn't been used uh, for representing the real the Atayal tradition it means it's not so heavy as a cultural background it's still a traditional story but it's a bit independent so we could use that story to interact with the school and for example uh, the second sequence there is someone playing flute this flute is a traditional flute of Atayal people that was uh, played when the Atayal hunters go to cut the head of the enemy they bring back the head and they have the song they can play on the flute so they didn't cut any head for this song so, but we just you the question about this kind of project or also nature recording yeah yeah but okay it's kind of like a question because uh, is any like requirement i can record a, like the sound from the plant or like the sound from the flowers the kind of okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's something that i was discussing last weekend because uh, usually when i go into nature it's mainly for my pleasure mm -hmm. It's kind of protect. I say it to everyone, oh, I'm going to record the sound, but actually it's just because I, li I like being in the nature. Uh -huh. And when I go into nature, as soon as I'm there for enjoying, 
I start listening and being very excited by, oh, where is it? Wow, is it far away? Is it close? How can I record it? Blah, 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 blah. And I was discussing with some friends last weekend that because when I go in the nature, something that always makes me very embarrassed. Because for me, the only way to record the sound of plants is when it's raining or when it's windy. When it's falling on the floor and drying and then I'm stepping on it. This kind of uh, interaction of other elements. Because actually you never hear the sound of rain. There is no sound of rain. There is no sound of wind. There is only the sound of stones, plants, roads being struck by the by the drop of water and the sound of tree being blown by the wind. Mm -hmm. So I would say, okay, the first answer is record the wind and the, and the rain. It's, it's mostly some land sounds. Mm -hmm. Especially like uh, uh, mm -hmm. this plant, the big one, big leaves. I don't pronounce oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one. What, when I'm in the nature, if it's rainy, it's only this plant that makes the loudest sound. It sounds a bit like cardboard. cardboard. It, it's very obvious. If you're in a forest of bamboo, the sound is really like, oh, very, very nice with the wind. But if you're higher in the mountains and it's uh, high, so wow, this is even better. The wind in song make a very soft and whistling sound which is very very special and this is what one of my favorite wind sounds um, a part of those interface which are wind and rain uh, I can also record some I have recorded some other strange sounds uh, for example if you put contact microphone on different kind of plants you can record different kind of sounds. For example, on old branches, sometimes there are some worms who are eating the wood, yeah. making this. And that, uh -huh. So with contact microphone, it's one solution. If you record wind or rain with contact microphone, then you remove the wood environment, this ambient sound. You just have the sound of the material being struck. I've recorded uh, ants walking on leaves. This also is very interesting plant sound. And sometimes, if the plant is really nobody plays with it, sometimes I will play by myself, just by touching, rubbing, hitting, using different different plants for getting different sound material. Then there is a last option, and I don't use it. But there is one artist called Michael Prime. Prime is P R I N E. Yeah. And he's using electric devices to record the sound of life of this plant. Yeah. Because every uh, animal or every plant has an uh, electric system yeah. producing electricity. So he has some machine where he can record some kind of signals from the electricity of the plant, yeah. which means you need to connect some electrodes on it, and then you have a machine that kind of uh, transcribe yeah. it. So it's not really the sound of the plant, it's more the sound of the electric activity of the plant. But it's quite interesting, and I, I really enjoy a lot of the work of my electric. Very fascinating stuff. And what is very interesting is, uh, different plants, different kind of plants make different kind of sounds. Yeah. So Michael Prime is very interested in plants, so he, he has made some album with cactus going to Borneo, Polojo, to record Rafflesia, which is the biggest flower in the world, mm -hmm. maybe like uh, several meters yeah. flower. Uh, he has he is doing some performance where he just bring one flower pot and just process the sound of the plants, of the electricity of the plants. That's very interesting. It reminds me like there's an artist who called um, Matthew something and he made a sound like in 2010 or something which is called like a pig. So yeah, a pig. So basically he just recorded all the sound in the factory and also like the way how people kill the pig. Yeah. All the noise from the birds to death. Yeah. 
which is awesome. Yeah.刚才我讲到一个接触式麦克风它通常做法是它不是一般麦克风长得像这样它是通常我们是用蜂鸣片就是大家知道蜂鸣片是什么就是一个圆圆的铜片嘛它是铜片吧然后我们就把它接出来就
spend a huge amount of time for getting familiar to this tool and experiment as much as possible. Sometimes you experiment because of technical problems. Like, okay, very often people say, wow, oh, I recorded a sound, but behind there is sound of cars that I don't want. How do I remove it? You cannot remove it. Don't even try. Just go again and record more and try to find different position, different moment. You will learn much more by doing this than learning the techniques of digital noise reduction. This is useless and doesn't work, it doesn't sound good at all. It's boring. So, um, there is different parts that uh, cannot be taught. You need to teach by yourself this kind of things. And I think Pienzo is really a, a good tool for it. Uh, 那大家现在听到的声音是它敲这个音叉嘛
that there was uh, shadows and, and sun, so it's not very clever. This, this uh, huge cylinder of metal, and you can just climb on it. And it is one piece of metal, very huge, like a box. And on the top there is, uh, you guide it. Uh, so the, 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 op the opening is just like one meter, and this is maybe two meters and a half wide, and maybe four or five meters high. So I will play the sound of it. Because the position of the microphone inside 
change completely the sound. If I put the microphone just at the entrance, I have the environment of the factory, the one of the road. As soon as I go down, it disappears, and then I catch some resonance. But the resonance, its frequency and its uh, uh, pulsation will change according to the depth. So I have to tune it before playing it, like a violin or a guitar. And then those different uh, uh, steps on the ladder make different sound. If you touch it, if you strike it, if you use a piece of metal or a stone or a branch to rub it, and on the the like a guide, uh, if you rub it continuously, if you find the good speed and the good energy, the the strength, then after a while, you get this uh, very low frequency sound, this kind of drone that evolves slowly. So th for me, it was really a, a lot of pleasure to. <laughs> to discover this, uh, it was a lot of fun to, to do and of course, this kind of sound if I want to create it from computers or analog devices it will be really painful, really difficult and probably I won't have this detail and this um, organism into the structure of sound and the evolution so, yeah. that's one, one part of the uh, the recording equipment is it also allowed to play and interact with the place a bit like what we have seen from the other people questions <laughs> bring some questions please There is one very direct interaction is when you are a human and you just step in the forest you're making noise and all the animals just shut up so this is some interaction I don't want <laughs> so the first uh, thing to learn is oh, that should bow when you do so with jump <laughs> and then walk the way of walking to, just to move your body in this place you, you need to relearn from scratch you need to select oh, shall I step on this stone or this no, this one make noise I, I choose this one so you, you have to learn how to be quiet and learn how to be quiet is really amazingly difficult because we are not hunters we are just people staying in apartments and uh, we are not made for that we didn't learn that once you know how to be quiet and just your presence okay, if you are quiet and still it's okay for frogs because frogs, they can feel the vibration of the floor very very precisely so if you just step the fish but it depends on the frogs, some are okay but uh, uh, yeah, anyway um, but frogs just see movement so if you don't move and if you are still, it's okay, they will forget you but birds, they see colors and shapes so if you are wearing normal clothes and being very obvious with a microphone and if your microphone has uh, wind protection it looks like a cat or something because you have the fur around, you just move away <laughs> it's dangerous for them so then you have to learn how to be discreet so actually many sound recordists nature sound recordist, what they are doing is a bit like a trap they settle the equipment in a place where probably some animals will come around and sing and then they move away so they can have very long cable and sometimes you do it with long cable and then you hide it somewhere else and you let the equipment or you let completely the equipment and you leave for one, two or three hours and record everything that means that after when you come back at home you need to listen three hours and maybe there is nothing inside so you, 